All right, guys. So week five. So like I said, I apologize because um, my voice is a little, uh, you know, it's a little bit scratchy, but it's changing right now. Your voice is it's changing. changing. <laughs> I feel like I'm going through puberty. No. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to make the best of it. Okay. So the open house boot camp series, everybody thinks that, I mean, I'll put my two cents into it. Uh, it's just an opinion, honestly, to be quite honest with you. Open houses, everybody, I think everybody thinks that they're super easy to do. Would you agree or disagree? I am disagree. Trust me. <laughs> Would you agree or disagree? I've only done a few and some have been easy and some have been like, oh, you know, a lot of questions that I don't know answers to yet. Okay. So that's fair. That's fair. For the most part, this is right. This is what I'm going to say about my opinion. For the most part, a lot of agents that I've seen in the business and in the industry in our offices think that it's just an easy way of, hey, let me contact an agent, let me do their open house, and I'm going to get leads, free leads. Mm -hmm. Well, no, there's a little bit more to it than that. So in the open house bootcamp series, we're going to talk about like identifying the looker and identifying who will be your next prospect, along with scripts. So. I know that I, maybe this is your first time to one of the momentum classes, mm -hmm. but in all of the momentum series that we've been doing nine times out of 10, every worksheet or workbook has dialogue, has scripts and has forms in there that are good for you to practice with or to make a copy of and then use it when like with a client and to give them away. So it's uh, I like these workbooks. They, it's, it, it works out really well. So let's continue. So let's talk prospecting. So this would be page. We're going to skip because the, the, these little work handouts, the first ones, they always talk about this is what's going to happen in this class. It gives you the syllabus or whatnot. The main syllabus that they do talk about, which is going to be page eight, which they always talk about is called SPAR. Before I get to page eight or to this agent operational model, let's talk about SPAR. Sparring mythology is you have to study, you have to practice, you have to take action, and then you have to reinforce yourself in what you do, okay? So if you study the material, it should be easy for you. You practice the material, you start owning the material. If you take action by applying by applying what you've learned in the real world, this will reveal any new knowledge gaps. And when you reinforce what you learned in both the classroom, which is here, and the field to create exceptional habits, so it's base it's super easy and it basically goes like a little like a little hamster wheel. It's the same process. You don't get out of it. You study, you practice, you take action, you reinforce it. After a while, it becomes known to you like you know like anything else so now let's talk about the operational model which is on page eight the operational model when it comes down to the open house boot camp is that you we do prospecting but in this case we have we generate the leads to convert them to service them and then we still continue marketing them in this case the open house uh, boot camp will focus on generating leads People don't believe in open houses. They, a lot of agents don't believe in open houses. I think that we, I have some agents, you don't believe in them. See, I need to make you a believer. Open houses are a great way to generate business. It's just a matter of being now choosy with your open house. What I mean by that, be particular. Just don't go do an open house on anyone's house. No, you have to now look at area, price point, and, and honestly, check out the, this is going to be dumb, but it actually makes sense, the directions to get to the house. If you don't have that many open house signs, and if it takes like literally a lot to get to that house to generate like people to come, do you think they'll come? Possibly not. If you have a lot of open house signage, this is important too. So remember, we have to also invest in our business. Like we have to invest in everything else. Mm -hmm. You guys are investing in mastery, which is coming to the education part of it. But now we got to invest in our business, which it comes down to open house signs. I have about 30 open house signs. 
and I have them split within one office. I have some signs so that agents can use them. And then I have a majority of them at my house. And the reason why I have so many is because if I ever get a listing or I do an open house that the directions take, make a right here, left there, da -da 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 -da, all over the place, <laughs> then I have enough to create that direction. I'm like their Google Maps to that house. So the reason why people don't believe in open houses is because they haven't seen an activity coming to open houses. I'm pretty sure that's happened to you guys. Because I know it's happened to me. They Now, I get it, but that we don't see people coming to open houses, but do they go to open houses? Absolutely. Yeah. It's just a matter of the, of the home that we do an open house on. So the operational model, obviously we're trying to prospect when we do the open house. The next thing it says, 50% of all buyers who attend an open house will buy a home within the next 12 months. So now we got to think about it that way. They will buy a home within the next 12 months. This is coming straight from the National Association of Realtors. 50% of all buyers who attend an open house will buy a home within the next 12 months. Wouldn't that be great that if we capture a lead from an open house, we have now a really warm lead? It's not a hot one. It's a warm one, knowing that once we've asked the right questions, we've captured their interests, we've kept in touch with them, we've maybe kept, we've caught in, got in touch with them and given them over to our lender to even start the process, they will come, they will buy within the next 12 months. That's a lead right there. So any little, any little thing can make it happen. This is always important. Every momentum class that we've done, we always look at the financial opportunities of the activities that we do. When it comes down to open houses, this is pretty easy and pretty simple and basic. I want to say the financial opportunities, we, we want to be consistent and get to being a proficient agent. But if we can have all, be efficient, which is the middle part of being an agent, we should do really well. Now let's, let's touch bases in regards to being consistent. Let's look at this one. If we were to do two open houses per week, 45 weeks in a year. So that's that's the number 45, there's 45 weeks in a year. If we were to do two open houses per week, it being consistent, that means we have 90 open houses per year. The average number attended, okay, fine. That's the average of attended an open house. You would have spoken to at least 450 people. The meetings that you would set, about 10%. The total meeting said about 45. The showing up rate, meaning that they've come to the open house, about 50%. The total meetings out of all of them that you've had during the year, 23, which are probably, I hate to say this, are probably a little bit more than what we normally get right now when it, has, when it comes out to meetings. The conversion rate, 45%. Your total closings for the year, 10%. Now keep in mind, I'm going to move it to the next slide. Keep in mind that, again, two open houses per week. But check this out. If you do for a total of 90 open houses in a year, this means this could mean open houses for your listings or ones you're hosting for another agent's listings or that belongs to your brokerage. The only, diff, the only thing that changes, I want, to sh I want to show you guys. There's a couple of things. The totals meetings that you set and your conversion mm -hmm. rate. Mm -hmm. See how consistent that is? Look at how that goes. The two things that change pretty much there are the total meetings that you set and your conversion rate. If you can be consistent with doing two open houses per week and then you start like noticing a good trend about it and then you're efficiently doing them and then you pick up on the dialogue and the all the scripts that are in this, if you become now an efficient agent, your conversion rate or the meetings that you set will go to 68 meetings set. Your showing up rate will be 60%. The efficient one is that your own independent um, listings or is that? That's just in general. It yeah. could be open houses for your own listings or open houses for other people's listings or other agents, other brokerages. 
I just, I, I want to be, um, I want to disclose, do I do open houses for agents within our, within our office? Sometimes. Do I do open houses for other agents at other offices? Absolutely. There's a reason why I do that. There's a reason to my madness that's in my head. Why? Because when you're doing open houses, I want to, I'm specifically being picky in the targeted area that I want to hit when it comes down to seeking potential clients. It's like, there's that saying, you are what you eat. So if you eat junk food, what's going to end up happening? You're going to get sick. You're going to get sick. If I want to attract good buyers, shouldn't I be doing open houses in our in a certain area that are going to attract those buyers? If I'm a, if I want to do luxury sales, now that's obviously that's a different ballpark. But luxury sales, even if I want to get close to that market, wouldn't it make sense to for me to hit maybe over nine hundred thousand um, dollar listings? Yeah. If I want consistent clientele, okay, maybe the six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar mark. Just you now. You, now we have to be choosy and picky in regards to what we want to go out there and do. So it could be any open house. It's a matter of what you decide to do. So yeah, this the conversion could be your own listings or other agents' listings. Okay. So on this one, look at it. All stays the same. Average number of attended people. Okay, about five. Because it all, it's all different. All, it, it all depends on the days that you pick to do your open houses. You could do them during the week, or you could do them during the weekend. It doesn't hurt to do uh, an open house during the week. You'd be surprised. People actually stop by. They could be on their break. They could be a neighbor. You meet people, and it happens. I had a listing in East LA, and I had and my client wanted me to have an open house every weekend until it sold. And it didn't even matter if I was there doing the open house or someone else was. So I said, you know what? I'm committed to doing the open house every weekend, not a problem. But I had an agent reach out to me from that area. And he actually uh, lived around the, that, that where my listing was at. And he's like, can I do an open house at your listing every day? I was like, you know what? If you're dedicated, that's great. Especially because it was summertime and that home had no air conditioning system. I'm like, you know what? By all means, go right ahead. I wouldn't be surprised if he got a bunch of leads, but he was there every day. Okay. It's consistency. He did it. I can't tell you what he picked up, if he picked up any leads or not, but it just goes to show that the guy was committed and agents do do that. So like I said, right here, it says total talks. This brings us to a total of 450 lookers or 450 conversations being held with prospects every year. That's a lot. How do we even get 450 talks now? We're already in the ninth month of the year. Have we had 450 conversations with anybody yet? Or, or a group of people in total? No, right? This just goes to show the numbers don't lie. This just goes to show if we were to do this and commit it to this, we could, we could get about 450 talks. Next. The first conversion rate you see is the percentage of meetings set. That answers the question of those 450 conversations I had across all of my open houses in a year. What percentage of people was I able to set up a meeting with? See, it progresses. As I get better, I, my efficient phase two, we're at 15%. But look at the total meeting set, 68. If we're proficient and we're always on it, we have it on our logged on our calendar and we're at 20% for meetings, 90% meetings set. There's a madness to all of this because we're looking at the numbers, but like I said, open houses are not a lot. They're a lot of work. It's just a matter of knowing how to do it when, like the right way. Total meeting set. There you go. We already discussed this. So I'm pretty sure you, you, you guys see, you see the show up rate, which you guess it indicates the number of people who actually came to the meeting. This is good stuff. Yeah. So now that we visually see this, so we'll close this prayer. 
I mean, I think every, like, listen, my, I said this in the last class that I, <clears throat> that I did. Ideally, we, what we want our agents to be is consistent. And that's something that we're not seeing a lot of agents be because they, they get very, um, I want to say they get very anxious, frustrated so easily that they want to throw in the towel. So before I push in the whole being efficient or being proficient, I honestly would like to just see consistency all across the board. If I see consistency all across the board, then I know that then we can push you to be efficient where you're doing now a little bit more. But if we can just start with you just being consistent and doing activities that you never tried to do before, the idea is for you to be uncomfortable in a comfortable world, okay? If you're uncomfortable, this is gonna be a cinch. So look at how the total cl of closings happen per year. Honestly, I think anybody would be grateful to have 10 closings this year. If you do it consistently, yeah. then it, it matures up to 23. If you become a pro at it, look, it would be 41, okay? So now that we've now that we've seen this out, let's go to page eleven. Page eleven, like we spoke, like I spoke about early on, spar to master open house strategies. You have to study, you have to practice, you have to take action, and you gotta reinforce. Okay, that is the mindset that you have to have. Now. Before we get to that point, before we get to uh, the next uh, the next section, we gotta also think about our core values. Isn't that crazy that with all of this, now we gotta think about our core values, our core entrepreneurial entrepreneurial beliefs. Okay, this is important, guys. Before I move on to the open house plan. Actually, hold on, I'll take a step back. And before we go to our open, our, our entrepreneurial beliefs, sorry. I wanna talk about this. The know, do, and have of open houses. This is an easy one. We have a prospect, we gain open house leads. We're going to learn about label the looker method. You should know, these are the things that you should know. You should know the traffic dialogue, the welcoming dialogue, mm -hmm. the labeling dialogue, the justification dialogue, the follow-up dialogue, okay? And then you should have, which is, I mean, everybody should have this at their open houses. You should have a call list so they can have a follow-up, like a, regist a guest register, the home criteria sheet, the MLS printout, Tax information, you'd be surprised. A lot of people do ask about taxes. Remember, you wanna be 10 steps ahead of the buyer coming in because we need to know the information about the property, okay? If we don't know, guess who they're gonna to wanna to go to? The listing agent, okay? Helpful tool, directional signs, that's when, I, when it comes down to open house signs, the time sign, registration device, pricing tools, and thank you notes. So this is basically what this right here. We should have it in our briefcases or in our in our in our bags. You know, an, an attorney doesn't go to court with being prepared without being prepared, right? Yeah. We should always have tools to be prepared at an open house, and that goes to show that we should know our dialogue as well as we should have these helpful tools and documents. Now, really quick, I have gone to some open houses pretending. I've already, I've been in the business. I have my license. I just want to go. And I, I get a, I get a kick of how they treat me. I mean, I've gone up to a couple of, how they treat me at an open house. I've seen some agents that are really thorough and I have seen some agents that could care less about anybody walking through. So then I wonder if you're an agent that could care less about a person walking through the open house, why are you doing the open house? Yeah. And if you're the listing agent, doesn't it seem like you're doing a disservice to the client? Because the listing agent, that would, you would think that that would be an opportunity to now find a buyer for the house or maybe find a buyer for another home. So going to open houses, I, I do my critiques. And I'll say this quick story. I just uh, closed on a listing 
or I had an agent do an open house. So I was, after the open house, I'm always following up with all the agents that walked in through with their clients. And then I also want to know, hey, did your client have an interest in the home? What, what's the feedback? Because I'd like to give that feedback back to my seller. Well, it just so happened to be that one of the agents told me that the agent who conducted the open house was extremely rude. And the dialogue that they did with that buyer, because the agent came maybe like three minutes afterwards, the dialogue that they had with that buyer was, um, wasn't really nice. Meaning like, I'll put it to you this way. She ended up asking the buyer, because the buyer had a lot of questions. So she basically uh, classified them. Oh, you must be just in the first time home buyer, so you wouldn't know. Would you ever say that to a prospect coming in? No, no. You treat them like as if they have purchased many properties. Just treat them that way. So when she, when the agent told me this, because the buyer felt a certain type of uneasiness, I obviously I apologized. And then I, and then the, the agent said, I don't think she's part of your team. I go, no, she's not actually. She's within my office, but I do appreciate the feedback. And then I'll give them the feedback so that they can maybe correct it, like you know, tweak it a little bit, and we'll go from there. Well, that kind of like stirred steered the buyer away. Can I guess who was? <laughs> no, you cannot. No, you cannot, because we have, we're on, we're live. <laughs> so no. But I'm pretty sure you 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 guess. So going back to dialogue, there are the dialogue is in this in these pages so that you're able to know what it is on how to talk to a client that's coming in, how to treat them how to justify it and how to make you look like the professional realtor that you are. Let me um, add something there that I like, I spoke, I talking with uh, Adrian about that in the, in the Swami. Yes. I don't like, I take my seat, my, my, my chair. So I sit when nobody's there, but if somebody approach and see the houses, I'm not sitting there and look at the people to look at the houses because I, I told Adriana, if I sit, if I go in some place and they just look at me that I am looking and they don't take the time to get up and reach out to and you. approach me and I ask me, not, I'm not going to buy anything to them because I don't go, I am not going to, to buy from people like lazy people. For me, it's lazy people. It is, you know, because okay, Jan, come on, Jan. So like, just put your name right there, and now just no. common courtesy. Like no, I, I'm not. Correct. So I, thank you very much. I, next time, that's it. That's what I do. And that's and that's a good approach to do it. Um, it, it reminds me of I've been in sales since since I got out of high school, and um, when I had a job when I was 19, I had worked out, out of high school, so 17, so now I'm 19. I decided to work at a men's clothing store. Why? Because I love men's clothing. I don't know, there's something about it. I like really nice clothing, so I worked at a men's clothing store. So it's funny, you, you give that, uh, that example. So my manager at the time told me, you cannot just stand, there's only two people on the floor, and the, the, the store is very big. There's either two or three salespeople on the floor. You just can't stand there and then have a walk and come in and let's pretend that this is articles of clothing right here. Okay. And you know, when they walk in and you have the, you know, the, the tables up in the front with the nice sweaters mm -hmm. or you just can't expect for a client to just walk in a customer and then they pick it up and they, they take it to the cash register exactly. and then you approach them like I got that. And then you sell it, you bar scan it. Okay. There's your sale for the day. Oh no, no, no. Um, my manager, I remember his name, his name was Renee. He told me, he goes, no, this is the way that you do sales is you greet them. Hey, how are you? How's it going? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm doing well. Um, is there anything that you're looking for? You know, what? no, I'm just looking and you let them look, but once they start touching something or they start looking at something and they, they're eyeing it, you approach them and say, oh, you know what? That, that sweater, hold on. Let me, let me show you something. This sweater right here, look at, if you pair it with this pair of pants and then you will fold the pant a certain way 
And then, you know what, but hold on, I got a jacket for that. I just want to show you, grab the jacket. You're not just only selling one sweater. You're selling an outfit. Or in other words, the way I was told, you're selling experience. Exactly. Experience, you selling yourself first. Yeah. For me, is that it's selling you yourself. Selling yourself first. So it's nothing different from real estate. When an, in an open house, not only you're selling the product, which is the home, you're showcasing the uh, the area. You're showcasing what what we have of value here. But the way you approach it, you're also selling yourself mm -hmm. in a nice way. You're giving an outfit. So it's a good it's a good uh, idea that you that you've explained that to her so she knows um, because I think it's important and that's something that I think is lacking right now and because of the way that the market is we got to keep that in mind. Okay guys, let's go to the the what I was wanting to talk about which is your core entrepreneur entrepreneurial beliefs. Page 11. You got to remember I'm not going to go through all of them. You got to remember some of the this are some of the important ones I I picked up on. There's no growth without discomfort. Okay. You live, I live in a world of abundance. The market does not, it does not, and will not determine my income. Focus is the key to success. I love number six. I reap what I sow. So guys, if we're not putting in the work, you reap what you sow. Not going to make anything. Okay. Leverage is a key to abundance. It's a win-win or no deal. Cost is only an issue in absence of value. See, I like these things. If you, if you have to get in the right mindset with everything. Open house, sometimes, honestly, I'm not going to lie. There's been times that at an open house, I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm like, oh, my gosh. I feel like sleeping in. I don't feel like going to the open house. And you know what? It's ended, it, my open house has ended up being disastrous. Why? Because of my mindset, I felt like my mood just killed the whole day. And it's like you you have to watch what you put out there. So whatever you put out there is what you're going to get. Yes. So change your beliefs and have a good mindset when you're doing these. Next thing, your real estate beliefs. Real estate sales can be a, a get-rich business. <laughs> real estate sales is basic. Not, I like number four. I will not convert 100% of the leads I do not generate. Number five, people will trust and follow what I can logically and tangibly explain. Number six, this is the best one. It's unacceptable to leave the client's money on the table. Super unacceptable. These are buyer's beliefs. Time reveals all. Motivated, qualified, and loyal people buy homes. That's the MQL system that I that I spoke about in a couple of momentums ago. I think it was maybe the buyers uh, of momentum class. Motivated, motivated, qualified, and loyal buyers are the ones that are always going to stick with you. If they won't meet you, they are not a buyer. A buyers deserve my immediate time and attention. That was I think that was a buyers uh, boot camp class that I did. We have to really focus on the A buyers, the B buyers, and the C buyers. The B buyers are maybe lukewarm. The C buyers, they're going to be there at the end. They are, those are the ones that are consuming your time that want nothing to do with real estate. A buyers deserve my immediate time and attention. Okay? So, this one. This is, I like this a lot. Focus is the key to success, which is a core belief. I, I really love that one. So, guys. Now with all of that, are you ready to learn some little tricks? All right. So we're going to section two, selecting, preparing for your open house. So that will be page 13. Okay. So when it says selecting your open house, price according to your goals, to your financial goals. Like I said, you, 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 you eat like you eat junk food. You're going to be, you're going to be junky or maybe chunky, but if you're looking for a good clientele base, one, we have to establish what is the clientele that we really want us, we want, we're geared to. So if you're looking for luxury, obviously you're gonna hit luxury. If you're looking for average, then go for average because that's still a good price point. Average right now, depending on your selected area, wherever your target is, probably 650, 700,000. Who knows? But, uh, you gotta keep that in mind. High traffic area. 
because you don't want to be at an open house and there's no traffic or it's super dead. And obviously you want to uh, go to a home that shows well inside and out. So it's funny because clients can be picky about the realtors that they choose to work with. Well, guess what? Agents can be really picky about the homes that we choose to do a list, uh, an open house okay. for. Okay. So keep that in mind. So when you're preparing for the open house, you got to also think about this. Conduct a pre-open house meeting with the seller. Obviously, if you're not the listing agent, well, obviously you can't do that, but obviously you've probably spoken to the listing agent. The listing agent wants an open house to be conducted. Great. So how do we work on that? We need to create marketing for open houses. More open house promotion. You can do that on your social media. That's big. I don't see, I don't, I don't see a lot of agents do that. I don't see agents saying, Hey, I'm doing an open house at ABC, uh, window drive and upland. They don't they just go to the, the property and, and that's it. No promote it as if it were your own. In other words, advertise a home three days prior to with a time sign. So advertise a home three days prior to a time sign. Well, advertise on your social media. That's big. Preparing for your for your open house also means that you have to inform the neighbors of the open house. 50. Minimum. 25 to your right, 25 to your left. Or like switch it around, even across the street, depending on how the how the neighborhood is. Inform the neighbors and have them be your invite have it have them be an invitation to the to the open house. But guess what you're gonna do with those neighbors? You're going to ask them for a referral mm -hmm. after the invitation. What's her name? Zell. Zell. Hey Zell, you know what? I have a open house on one, two, three Rainbow road. I would love for you to come to the open house is this Saturday between 12 and four, but I also want to let you know. So if you see a lot of cars coming in into the neighborhood it's most likely for the open house, I hope I can see you there. And here's the flyer with your information. Da -da -da. So obviously, you're, oh, thank you so much. Sarah. Hey, by the way, since I have you here and I don't want to take up too much of your time, would you happen to know of anybody that's looking to buy or sell? Oh, you don't know anybody? You know, I appreciate that. Here's my information. If you do come across somebody, give them my information or have them come to the open house. If by then, from that time that I met you to then, maybe they run into somebody, maybe someone comes to their mind, have them meet me at my open house. I'll most likely have my one of my lenders there. And maybe they can discuss financing options. You see, always ask for a referral. Does it sound bad? No. Why not? Secure registration device. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, registration device means what do you use for your open house? A lot of people use Open Home Pro. I use that. The KB Core open house uh, device. I use that. You can have the, the sign-in sheet with the form. Mm -hmm. You can use that. Secure registration device. Build an open house register. Same thing. This is important. I don't see this a lot. Agents don't do a printed tax record and MLS sheet of the open house. They only do a flyer. What, what I saw yesterday when I went to a, uh, uh, to my plan to the open house was the MLS sheet in the schools around the... Thank I you. I love that. The MLS sheet would it be the entire mm, the, the the customer sheet. Yeah. Okay. Because when you're on the MLS, you can print agent. The you can do the agent sheet or the customer sheet. Do the do the customer sheet. You know why? Because on the agent sheet it says how much the commissions are. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> All the information you don't want the client to, to see. Exactly. You know? So um that's a good one. They do need to print out your schools, the, the schools in the area. Even communities that are community centers in the area. Okay, so print tax record and MLS sheet of the open house. Print summary supported support pages for all active homes in the area. You can actually pull up some maybe three or four homes in the area and say, hey, this besides this home, there's also this one that's for sale and this one's for sale. Do that. It doesn't. What is it? Doesn't hurt because how about if a, if a buyer may not like the home that you're doing the open house with, but maybe they see it on paper. Ooh, that's, look, that look, that's a nice home. And they probably saw, oh, the price is actually, wait, that might be cheaper or whatever, or has bedroom count, a higher bedroom count, whatnot. 
You have it right there. You can get their information. You can say, hey, you know what? Um, are you available to view it today? I can show it to you after this open house. Why? You know, it's only down the street or whatever. Now you hurt people's interest. They're seeing the information that you're getting, giving them. Prepare a set of basic pricing tools. Okay, when it comes down to that, prepare a set of basic pricing tools. So basically, what what pricing are they looking for? Range the range the the homes in the area between this and this. Okay, maybe seven hundred is too too high for you. Are you looking for maybe in the five fifty six hundred thousand dollar range? I don't know where that's at anymore, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Find maybe even a, on the the city next door. You know, so what we have uh, Upland, so the city next door. If I'm this way, Montclair, Claremont. If I go that way, Rancho, Ontario, you know, something nearby. Hey, maybe this, you might not like this, but maybe I got this right here. And I'm like, oh, okay. See? Now, this one, the day of, so the day of action, this is one that, that kind of, uh, that kind of got me, which is, I thought it was hilarious. The bottom of page 13 says, pick up food and refreshments or flowers when you go to the open house. It has been a scorcher. These last couple of weeks on the weekend. I mean, we almost had a hurricane, but that really didn't happen. But when, like, this past weekend, it was, like, sweating, you know what? And what should you have? Maybe bring, like, go to the freaking Dollar Tree and get, like, water bottles mm -hmm. or little ones, you know? And pass them out. At my open house, I have shopping bags or, like, those canvas bags that say Remax Champions on it. And inside the canvas bag is a water bottle, a pen, a notepad, and my calendar. So it's already personalized. And I, and whoever comes, I'm like, here you go. And I offer it to them. Okay? So, it's, like, bring refreshments, maybe, like, cookies, whatever. Or, Chips for the kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or don't not candy because then you'll have them, like, running around and it gets sticky. Oh, yeah. So no candy. It gets sticky, especially on furniture. Okay? Uh, put out several signs on the way to the open house to make it easy to find. So if you only have six open house, like open house signs, uh, ask somebody to borrow some because I don't think six will be enough. Okay. Just that's just literally, that's just for the corner because you got to put them at every corner. And if you miss out on, oh my gosh, that happened to me one time. And I was, I thought I was, I, I was going to cry. And at the time I had to get my team lead and he drove from San Bernardino to, I forgot where I was. I think I was in heaven and he got mad at me. He's like, you only took that many. I go, that's the only, that's only how many I have. He's like, that's why I have X amount. So he brought me a whole bunch of them and I was able to generate people to come. Okay. This one is the one that the kicker, it says here arrive 20 minutes before the open house. Well, how many minutes do you, people do, do the agents really get to the open house? Sometimes. <laughs> right there, the number one question. Is this for family feud? When do agents get to their open house that they're conducting? I would give her the number one answer. They arrive right on the time of the freaking open house. If your open house is at noon, guess what time? Well, guess what time I'm normally there at? I'm normally there an hour before. Why? Because one, I have to unload my, my stuff from the car take it inside the house and I'll explain what I have put out my signs. If I've done what I needed to do to prepare for the open house, I'm going to have people probably ready to get to the house. So I want to be there on time. Then I have to park the car, not in the driveway, no. not in front of the house, maybe on the side of the house so that the house shows. Okay. I have to go inside, undo my bags, put my, my banner up that I have that I've created for myself, set up the waters, do the, the open house registry thing, have my paperwork on the side so it's set really nicely and clear, turn on all the lights, flush the toilets. That's another one. Flush the toilets, open the windows. You see, all of that takes a lot. People think or agents think that if they arrive to their open house on time at like 12 o'clock and they're doing all of this, they're like, oh, I'm gonna do this super fast. And then you have people walking in. And then they're gonna think you're ignoring them. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. So yeah, the flushing of the toilets is extremely important. And then when it says um, neutralize odors, you could put a nice candle, not something overwhelming, so it's inviting. The one thing that I do do, 
I don't, I connect, I have a small little Apple speaker, a little like thing that you can put in your that like Apple has. I have it connected to my iPad and I put the speaker at the entrance of the door or somewhere in between so that it generates the music all around and it's nice like, you know, nice calming music. So it feels like I'm, I'm creating an experience. So when I walk in, I want it to be like, ooh, okay, where'd that music come from? And they don't even know it, okay? And I greet them. So let's make sure that we get there well before being there on time, okay? Because that in itself is a hot mess. Okay, let's talk about the day of your open house. Ooh. Ah, it's going too fast for me. Stop going fast. Okay, see, I already explained all of this. I need an open house signs. I love number six, flush all the toilets. You'd be surprised what you find as a, <laughs> as a realtor <laughs> in the house. People forget, you know, uh, turn on soft music on, on low, write thank you notes to everyone who registers. Oh, this is a good one. For follow-up, Thank you notes mm -hmm. because you know at one point or another during the open house you're gonna have some time instead of like going like this on your phone because you're on TikTok. well why not take the time to be like okay who was the first person that came in oh it was teresa okay you know what thank you teresa a nice handwritten note and have it there there's probably like a mailbox when you get out throw it in the mailbox and on and on its way it goes the following day the the mailman is going to pick it up and it goes to their house See how nice that is? It's welcoming. That's why I say open houses are not, um, it's not a, it's a, it's a, it's a process to the madness, but it's well worth it if you execute it right. And a lot of people just think, no, I'm just going to sit there and just wait for someone to come in and say, listen, I have a million dollars and I want to buy a house. And that does not happen. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. When I, what I do is, uh, uh, I, I send a text. A, a, a text note, uh, thanks note, but in the text and tell them that I am going to call them the next day or two days, whatever. Okay, you can do the text message. I think like text messages obviously have um, because sorry, because sometimes people don't want to leave the uh, address. So uh, I can, can I have to address? Uh, no, I just okay. So then here's the thing: they will leave an email address. Yes. Get a nice little thank you email. Carbon copy yourself in it so that you know that it went to them and it went back to you, mm -hmm. and it doesn't bounce back. And if it bounces back, then you know it was incorrect email address. Yeah, just something nice. Little thank you. If you do are able to get their home address, maybe if like their uh, neighbors or whatever. Oh, you're the neighbor. Now. Oh, which home do you live at? Oh, like the one on 6869. Okay, so I already know 6869. And then if I put two and two together by the name, the, the first and their last name, all I have to do is look at property profile just to confirm, okay, that, that was them. There's always ways to doing this. Okay, so now let's go into scripts and dialogue. Okay, scripts and dialogue. We're going to move on to page 15, guys. Are you learning something? Yes. Okay, good. that's what I want. Now I'm learning something too. <laughs> okay, now that we okay, I want to this is this is talk this is uh, talking about increasing traffic. So this is when you're talking to the neighbors. Okay, talking to the neighbors is easy. So we got to practice our scripts, scripts and role playing. So when it comes down to informing the neighbors of the open house, super easy peasy. Hey, my name is Elizabeth with Remax Champions, and I'm simply stopping by to let you know I'll be holding an open house at Smith's home on 123 Easy Street, Sunday from 3 to 6. As an extra service to the Smiths, I'm informing their closest neighbors in case you may know someone who's interested in moving into the area. If you do, I would love to see them at the open house on Sunday. Here's my card, or if you know anyone ever has a real estate need, please don't hesitate to call. It was a pleasure meeting you, and I hope you have a great evening or a great day, whatever it takes. Obviously, this is scripted, but you can figure out and like make it even condense it even shorter. But you have to get out of your comfort zone and get uncomfortable when you're meeting the neighbors. Neighbors want to know who you are, um, and I hate to say this, I feel like nine times out of ten, even the listing agents, because I'm guilty of it too. 
we sometimes forget to even like go and door knock around our listing that because we're so in a rush oh, let's get this sold let's get this sold that we go straight to the open house but you got to if you think about it that way i've left now business behind for now another realtor to come in and try to capture the business so always i i want to say always think of it that way i don't want to say assume but assume that i think of it that way that the agent probably didn't do that and now you're doing that you're not doing that for them you're doing that for yourself because the neighbors are going to be like i never saw this agent wait a minute this is not even the listing agent oh this is Vita. Oh, well that's nice she invited me to the open house see what i'm saying so Here's my card. If you or anyone you know ever has a real estate need, please don't hesitate to call. Leave a, a business card, a, a, a flyer, a pamphlet, whatever you have. Ooh. Easy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about greeting attendees at your open house. So what is it that we don't want to have happen? That you're rude, right? We don't want you to be rude. So this is section three, page 19. This is where we're going to identify the lookers. We don't want to be rude. So when I walk into an open house, Vita, like let's say you're doing the open house, I walk in, what do you say? I just said, uh, hey, welcome to my open house. Um, do you have, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And uh, if you say, oh, ja, I'm just looking, I say, okay, feel free to look. look. So I, 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 even I joke to them, so por mirar no se paga. Okay. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Okay, so here's a, here's a, a way of talking to a, a person at an open house. So where do you go? Hi, my name is Elizabeth with Remax Champions. Come in and make yourself at home. It says there, greet them at the door with an engaging smile and a handshake. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, if they don't want a handshake, you can do a fizz bump because you know, some people are a little bit like, Ugh. but it's rare for you to get a handshake that's different. And we give a handshake, not the handshake like this, Good. Handshake like this, mm -hmm. a nice, not a firm one that you're gonna yank their arm <laughs> off, but you know, a nice one, like a, a, a confident one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we would like a record of everyone who has been through the house today. So, if you could please sign my guest register, I would also appreciate any comments you have regarding the home on your way out. Take your time, look around, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Doesn't that sound nice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's inviting. Yes, it sounds a little bit long, but it's, I, I, I don't want to sound mean because we all do it. Hey, welcome. Please feel free to look around. And then that we just leave it like that. Oh, and can you please just sign in? Okay. And we leave it like that. No. We're creating a dialogue. Hey, my name is Elizabeth with Rematch Champions. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And your name? Like, usually they say their name. My name is Elizabeth. Oh, my, my name, name is so. Is, uh -huh. you, see how, you see how that goes? You're already creating... A relationship like you're you're creating something there there's substance well you know what Vita? we would like a record of everyone that's passing through the house if you can please sign in to the guest guest registry okay they're signing in whatever they're typing it in and you could have a flyer or whatever however you lay it out and you go on with it and when you say when the people say oh that's okay i just come to look what they don't want to sign my guest mm -hmm. register you know what i'm sorry but the seller is very particular and wants to have a you know, and you wait for a record of the people that are coming into the home. If, if you, and, and I've had to actually turn some people away. Oh, really? Yes. Because it's out of respect. Um, ideally, you're not going to come across like, um, like in a bad way, but it's out of respect to the homeowner. Because if you like, and I would say, and I even say it like this, you know what? Put yourself in the homeowner's shoes. Would you want just anybody coming in through the home? no yeah we'd like to get a record of that and they're like oh okay no not a problem i go don't worry about it we're not going to harass you we just want to show the homeowner hey these are the people that came through the home change your tone of voice and just like throw it that way you if you were in the, in the seller's shoes you wouldn't mind right yeah. and i've had that at um at a open house in pasadena where one of the one of the men it was hilarious older gentleman 
Well, I don't want to be solicited by you realtors. Not a problem, sir. Not a problem. I go, all we ask is that you just register. Okay, I'm just going to put my name down. Okay, but the thing is on my register, putting the name down, he couldn't move on to the next page. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, well, what's this all about? I go, you know what, don't worry. You put, put in your name. He goes, yeah. And he goes, I'm not going to give you my phone number. I go, not a problem. I don't feel like giving you my, my email address either. Not an issue. He goes, I'm the neighbor's neighbor. Mm -hmm. Not an issue, sir. So I just inputted like my phone number, my email address, and that was it. You know, you get those type of people. Mm -hmm. But look how nice this is. I would appreciate any comments you would have regarding the home on your way out. Take your time, look around, and let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Please don't follow them like a puppy. No. Please don't give them the tour. You know why? Because who's manning the front door? Yeah. And if you're by yourself, which you can't be by yourself or you can have someone there and you guys can tag team and like, you know, one person can do the tour and then the other person can do the flight. You just figure that one out so that they're, you're always keeping everybody like you always want to have eye contact. You always want to entertain them. Always know whoever's coming in. Hey, have them come in. Like you're a tour guide, but tour it on your own. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the end. Okay. All right. Practice the welcoming and in-person looker dialogue. So that's what we just we just went over that. So we went in in regards to how to talk to the people. Okay, it says here on page 19 in the middle it says resist the urge to play tour guide. This is not a museum, guys. This is a home. Okay, so please don't do the tour. If you guys don't have an open house registration form, look what they give you. An open house registration form that you can use on your own. Okay. And the best part about it that there's a page here that I actually like. Um, and I think it's gonna be coming up. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it right now, but there's a page that's coming up that I really like. Now, after that, like now let's go look at page 21. Your goals following the tour. Once the lookers tour the home, your goal is to number one. Answer any and all of their questions. Reveal information. Number two, identify where they are in the buying process. That's easy because there's questions that we're going to be asking them. Okay. Number three, close and follow up accordingly. Take appropriate action. So that's a, that is your homework after every open house. Close and uh, excuse me. Close and follow up accordingly. But let's talk about the your goals in regards to this. You answer any of their any other questions and provide information. You identify where exactly they are in the buying process. Because again, what did they what did it say in the beginning? 50% of the people that come to an open house will buy when within the next 12 months. Close and follow up accordingly. So let's take a look at page 22. This is important because these are the questions that you should be asking example of questions that you should be asking. You can do it in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so, okay. So let's look at these questions at the end. So, okay, so Vita, you, you, you showcase, I showcased you my wonderful training room here that's for sale. Here are Remax Champions. I, I, well, what do you think of the home? It's uh, it's nice. It's pretty. The asking price, right? Okay. Uh, the list price is four hundred and fifty thousand. Does that fit your price range? Yeah, I'm looking around that. Okay, so what school district? Okay, so you're you're gonna be saying what school just district is in? A lot of people don't even ask. So if they don't ask, let them know. Make sure you know about the area. Know the school district. It doesn't even if they don't have kids. You can say, hey, this is the of the Unified School District area. And is that something, a district that you're looking for? And that's how you get more information. We wanna have them answer questions, not be like, no, yes. We want them to say more. So say more about that. That's a common phrase that I used to use in sales. So say more about that, you know? Okay, so the school, uh, so Vita, the, the school district is the of the Unified School District. Is that the school district that you're looking to be in? Well, I had to, search about that district because I don't know about that. Okay, well that well that's okay. Then I can actually give you um other areas or are you looking for private schooling or public schooling or are you good with public schooling? It could 
Public school. Public school. Okay. I have actually, the Elbow Unified School District is, is considered a very good school uh, school area or school district. Um, they were rated, and I could just go on and just find out. Like, I could figure out stuff. Okay. And then, um, the look, what are the property taxes? If the, they asked about property taxes, make sure you know about property taxes. Then maybe they want to know. Now, client or buyers, <laughs> bless you. Buyers are getting smarter. Oh, yeah. It's like, I want to know if they went to a, I, I'm buying a home class. What questions to ask? Because I've never had these questions asked before. I honestly have never had, I've had maybe some of like the, the basic easiest, like people come in just like these simple questions, but I've never been asked, what are the property taxes? And I'm like, Egh. and I hate having to say, you know what? Um, I can get that information. Is your phone number? Da, 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 da. Yes. As soon as I finish this open house, I'm gonna send you all the information. I now would want to know up front and have that information in hand, so that I don't feel dumb and not know that information. Now, now we have to be again ten steps ahead of them. Yeah, they ask for Melrose sometimes. Yep, Melrose, and what is the tax rate? Mm -hmm. Beaumont tax rate, I believe it's one point seven five. We have a normal tax rate of one point two five. If you go to Hennett, San Jacinto area, some areas are 2% tax rate or 2.25 tax rate with a Melrose. And I'm like, Ugh. okay. So see, as long as you're aware of what's going on in that area, you should be okay. But see, all of these questions help because the buyer at the end, at the end when you tell them about the taxes, know that it's too high for us. So then, okay, if it's too high for you, let me ask now more questions. And I can even have a notepad there taking notes and be like, okay, Vita, is your number da, 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 and your email address, is it da, 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 at gmail.com? Okay, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. After I finish here with this open house, I'm going to send you um, a list of properties. You were looking in Upland, Rancho, and Fontana, right? Yes. Okay. I don't want anything with uh, Melrose. With no Melrose? Okay, great. Then that actually helps me out a whole lot. I'm going to send these properties out over to you. Let me know what you think. Give me your feedback. And if there's one in particular that catches your eye, let's go from there. After I sent that, then I can do a quick follow-up call maybe the following day. Hey, Vita, did you get my email? Yes, I did. Hey, now, since I sent you a property, I've been meaning to ask you um, your financing. Are you doing 20% down? See, now then I start getting more into more into involved in what they're doing. Are you selling your property? Is this contingent? There's a lot of people doing that right now. Are you downsizing, upsizing? What's now I start creating a relationship. I want to get more of a storyline out of her. Okay. So that's that's what you want to do. What's a Melrose? Ruse is um it's like a, it's a, it's like I want to say it's a special assessment on a property that's added on by the developer. And what, what I explain, I don't oh, know. Where, how do you explain it? Um, I don't know if I'm wrong, but I say, well, in the new communities, they um, they add that it's something you would pay the city to <clears throat> police and new schools. Uh, um. The Melrose amount basically <coughs> covers paving of the street, mm -hmm. the playgrounds, the schools, the the security around the area. That's what you're paying for when there's a Melrose on a property. This is a new community. Especially, yeah, especially new community areas. Yeah. And you'd be surprised, even in older areas, they have Melrose. But, but the Melrose before, is down. I hear before they, the Melrose, uh, they just disappeared in after, I think it's 30 years. 20 or 30 years, something yeah. like that. But in the new communities right now, the Melrose stay forever. Mm -hmm. That's what I hear. Yeah, I mean, they gotta make their money somehow. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, listen, milk costs eight bucks a gallon. Yeah. So eight bucks. To... <laughs> I said, yeah, but no, I, I'm not. I'm like, I'm, I'm so glad I don't like drinking milk. So I'm I, glad. I, <laughs> either, I don't consume milk either, but no, oh, man. Okay, guys, let's, uh, we're getting uh, close to the end of this, so I wanna keep you guys so focused. Okay, now let's labeling the looker categories. So you got the ones that say, no, they're not planning to buy right now. Section four, sorry, page 25. They're not planning to buy now or ever. 
Yes, they're ready to buy right now. Yes, but they won't be ready to buy for a few months from now, between one or three months. Or yes, but won't be ready until the distant future, six to 12 months. Okay. I, 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 I respect that. But now that we've labeled, these are the labeling the looker categories. We have now categories where we can specifically place these people in. Mm -hmm. So that I don't have to be harassing them on a drip campaign every every time. If they're gonna buy in three months, I'll put them on a drip campaign instead of schedule. Hey, keep what like keep in touch with this person in three months. Hey, keep in touch with this person in January 2024. They'll remember, oh, you remember me? Yeah, I met you at this open house. Oh, I don't remember that. Remember the one where I was flagging you down? I don't, you know, whatever. But at least you're you're able to categorize them, which makes it easier. What I love about the chart on page 25, if you look at it, it's labeling the dialogue flow chart. This is a good flow chart because this actually will help a whole lot. So, are you currently in the home for a new market? Are you currently in the market for a new home? These are several paths your conversation could go when you ask an open house attendee. I suggest you guys read this. If they say that yes. Then you go, how are you going about finding your perfect home? Okay, they say, I have I have an agent. Oh, have you signed an agreement with that agent? I love these agreements. These are my favorite ones. Have you ever heard of the BRE? B-R-E. Write that down, and when you get to your car forms, look at it. It is a buyer's representation agreement. Okay. I love this. I'm like, I love these agreements. I stick to these agreements. Give me one second. It's my son. Oh, you want to talk to your son? <laughs> Just, yeah. So um, I stick to these agreements because of the simple fact mm -hmm. that. And they need a green map. Right. Okay. When you lock in a buyer, you can lock them in for a certain okay. amount of time. And they can't get out of their contract. So basically, have you ever heard of the uh, of the phrase "buyers are liars"? Buyers are wonderful. Buyers, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to criticize them. But buyers and sellers are wonderful. Just the only thing is that they like to cheat on us. They don't like to be loyal. Sometimes they like to use some of us just to look at properties and then go with a different another agent. So that's why we ask: Do you have an agreement signed with them? I usually have them sign an agreement after the first couple of showings to have them show their commitment with me as a realtor. And I usually say this is a prerequisite for my for my office. And they don't they don't say anything bad about it. Well, what, what happened if the uh, clients say, oh, you know what? I don't like to uh, make a uh, commitment for anybody because if uh, I have another agent to show me the property, so I don't with them. So. Then they're not a they're not a, a loyal uh, buyer. Why do I want to waste my time with mm -hmm. them? There's ways of getting around that. Okay, those are the ones that are not are going to be using me, and I don't want to be working with those people. Well, sometimes they say, "Oh, yeah, I am have another I have a buyer, but if you can help me, so I come with you." Well, no, no, wait a minute. This is when this is when you're the agent. And you have a, there's a buyer, so they have another agent. So sometimes the because in in the summer we hear a lot of things. So like yeah, I am working with somebody, but um, if you help me, so I can go with you. Okay, great. Do you have a BRE signed with that agent? They have to say what is that. Exactly. I, I can explain that. Exactly. You know what? I'll be more than happy to help you. I'll go. Let's go look at some properties. But guess what? If I don't get them to sign there, I'm going to get them to sign before I show them the property. In order for me to show you this property, I need you to sign my BRE form. And how long does the BRE? Well, sometimes you can send it. I, I let it last for about a year. Oh yeah. A year? Oh yeah. Okay. In that in that form, so you you don't put put any address. Oh, okay. So okay. I love this part. So let, let's steer clear for like two minutes and I'll explain to you the BRE, but I'm going to do it relatively quick because I don't want to divert from this because this is important. On the BRE form, I put their name, obviously our office. In the BRE form, when it says price point, I go $1 to a million dollars. Okay. 
Oh yeah, I'm very strict. One million to one dollar to a million dollars. If it asks for properties, which it does ask for property type, guess what I put? SFR, one to four units, commercial, land, vacant. I put all the properties. Oh, I put Mobile and manufactured homes, okay? Let me turn on the light. Mobile and manufactured homes. Oh yeah, I'm going in all the way. Besides property type, it also asks for cities. Well, guess what I'm going to be putting? I'm going to be putting LA County, Ventura County, Riverside County, Orange County, San Bernardino County. Oh, but I'm buying in West Covina. That's LA County, sweetheart. My BRE is valid there. So if you don't put any of those, if you don't put all of those and you only put one county, then that's all the that's BRE the only county. is? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, well, they can say, you know, well, forget you. I'm not going to buy in Riverside County. I'm going to buy in San Bernardino County. And if you only place Riverside County and then buy in San Bernardino County, you're SOL with that form. Okay. Next thing. How many, t how valid is my BRE uh, for valid for? 365 days. What is that equivalent to? One year. And it's going to be per the MLS compensation. Whatever it says on the MLS is what I get compensated for. So you don't put any number. In just it's whatever the MLS compensation is. So they bought a property that I showed them and they went ahead with another agent and the MLS says that as a two and a half percent commission, guess what? I am going to get paid two and a half percent commission. Why? Because I have check mark MLS compensation. And there is your BRE agreement. When Has that ever happened to you before where a client a fast one? Oh yeah, it just happened to me two weeks ago. Would you like to know how? Yeah. Okay, easy. <laughs> I like I you know I love sharing these stories. I mean this is life. Mm -hmm. um, and my my witness to this, no joke, our processor at Champions Mortgage. Sandra, Sandra experienced this for me. Okay, so a long story short, I have a client, I had a client in escrow. We already closed. Had a client in escrow. Did I have him sign a BRE agreement? Yes, I did. And it's funny, I got this client referred to me by his mother. Okay. That I just sold her a home with for, that she's never bought a home in her life. She's, re she's almost on retirement. She just bought her first home ever. Okay. She referred me to her son. I said, okay, not a problem. Her son, for some odd reason or another, even though we were on the same page, you know, like we're the same kind of personality types, like we're just like that with his partner, something inside of me told me, you know what? I don't know. I'm going to have to like get a BRE sign from him. So that's exactly what I did. When did I have him sign? Easy. I had him sign it when, after we uh, sent out our first uh, offer, because I went showing properties and he, at first it was like, no, I don't like this home. No, I don't like this home. Finally, I was able to get him. Well, it was actually his partner liked the home. He was not there and I would have to go back and show it to him. So it was a hot mess. When we wrote up offers, I threw that BRE in there along with the offer. I said, here's my BRE. They're like, okay, that's not a problem. I go, perfect, because this goes to show that I'm the one representing you in, in, the, in the purchase of a home. And it states it right there, how the, the validity of the contract. Okay, yeah, not a problem, not a problem. Okay. We're already in escrow on a home. Now we're going to 45 days into the escrow because there was a hiccup with him getting his documentation to us and he kept dragging. Okay. Got down to the point where um, he was getting kicked out of his current home out of a lease. And we kept waiting for his IRS tax documentation. Then all of a sudden, he, he has $20,000 in escrow. Then all of a sudden, he's like, you know what? Forget it, screw it. I don't want to be in escrow no more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I want. I don't care if I lose my 20 grand. Who in the right mind says that they don't care about losing their, their 20 grand? Mm -hmm. And they're like, I want to see the, the form about the BRE thing. And then he's, I want to cancel that. Can't cancel out of that, sweetheart. No way. You can't. I want to cancel escrow. I don't want to deal with REMAX champions no more. I mean, he went to the whole other level. And it was nothing that we did. It was basically his documentation.
from the IRS was being prolonged. He had an identity theft thing planted against his record. So we had to wait for the tax transcripts from directly from the IRS. So he was blaming it up all upon us. In reality, it's the IRS. We have nothing to do with it. And he's like, I want out of this agreement. And in reality is because we kind of find out that he was already talking to another agent that he thought that he could close a transaction with a different realtor on the same home. And that wasn't mm -hmm. going to be the case because guess what? We're under contract with me. Raymax champion is representing you for that home for You can't do that. You would have to cancel escrow on this and then start all over again with this other realtor. So it just, he wasn't making any sense. So did he want to get out of it? He could, did he get out of it? No, we closed escrow. He tried. So we had him, um, look at the BRE and then I contact Rod Feldman. No, it's a valid agreement. Yeah, but if the client say they want to cancel the, um, and the BRE, they can, they cannot cancel the BRE. Why not? Cause it's valid for 365 days. Oh, and the broker would have to agree with it. You think the broker's going to want to agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what if you, like I had them sign one and then, you know, after a couple of months, we haven't found anything, but we're, you know, they're, they find another agent who maybe shows them a house that they like, and then they're like, oh, we, you know, we want to cancel. But I'm like, oh, you still have like six more months with me. Mm -hmm. um, could they still cancel that? or could It I would be up to you whether to decide whether you're going to release them or not. Okay, so it would but be up to the agent. It would be up to the broker. Oh, the broker. Yeah. Because so, remember, your, your client, like anything that you do with your clients, it's up to the broker's discretion to basically say, you know, just like let them out, but it's a BRE. So my question is, why would they be going with another agent? Why would they continue with you? Yeah. In my case, it's because he was getting frustrated thinking that it was me or the real estate side holding everything up or and the lending side holding everything up. And in reality, it wasn't. It was the fact that it was the IRS holding everything up out of our hands. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I hear that some agent did happen too, and, but that was like you say, with other property, they went to another agent with another property, but this property find out what the escrow was, and then she's saying they, they be added to the, to the, uh, that escrow, and the escrow was, had to pay this. The uh, previous agent. broker. Exactly. So, but how you find out what? You'll find out by title, and you gotta just be on top of that. Again, we're sidetracking. A what happened if the escrow closed and you never get? So you can to actually you can take the the that you can take them to court. Court is like nine months. Hey, for <laughs> compensation, I mean, it's it been the commission because it's not the commission. Yeah, the commission. But honestly, honestly, with all with all like transparency, I do it for the simple reason that. I spend so much time and effort with these buyers. If I'm going to be committed to you like night and day and I've done everything, there shouldn't be a reason why it should be, um, why we should be able to move forward. I just had that fortunate luck of having a very impatient and um, yeah, impatient kind of a client that was all over the place. And it, regardless of how calm that we all were, it was just like, he was extremely extra. In other words, but that's how you do the, the, the BRE. So let's go back to this dialogue because you guys are killing me right now. Sorry. It's all good. Um, okay. Have you signed an agreement? If yes, do not go further in the conversation. That is out of respect to the other agent. Oh, you signed a BRE. Okay. Well then you know what, by all means, um, it was nice talking to you. If they say no, what process are you using to ensure that you get the home you want and get the home you get? So there's conversation dialogues under there. Did your agent invest invest time up front, defining your needs, making sure the home fits your financial parameters and thoroughly discuss rules and expectations? Next one, did you see value in the process? Do you see value in the process like this? The last one, would you be willing to meet so we can discuss a more proactive approach? Okay. Now, and no process. So or how are you going about finding the, your perfect home? And they say, I have no process. I don't know what you're talking about. How would you like to use a proactive process that will ensure you to get the home you want and home you get? First, we need to meet. So then see, it's helping you if they say that you don't, they don't have a signed agreement and it's also helping you talk to them if they don't understand what process to go about. 
That's an easy buyer's consult that you can say, hey, you know what, meet with me. Let, why don't we meet at my office, conference room, let's talk. Boom, okay? Or how about if they say no? If they're currently in the, in the home, um, if they're in the market looking for a new home, no. Okay, so this is how we could distinguish that if they're looking loose. So what brings you out today? Oh, I was just like wanting to be nosy. Okay, well, that's great. Just be all nosy all you want. But have you ever considered selling your home? I don't have a home. Okay, well, then you, well, have you ever considered buying a home? How can I get, see, that's where you start talking more dialogue, more questions, more finding out what they're all about. That's what's important. Do you know anyone at this time who's interested in buying or selling? Remember, every everyone that you encounter with, referral, referral, referral. Do you know anybody that's looking to buy or sell? As much as I can't stand my client that I just like closed us her on that wanted to fire Remax champions because of his IRS transcripts. You don't think I'm not going to ask him for a referral? He might hate my guts, but hey, we got him in the home. Mm -hmm. Do you have a referral? And if, and if I don't go to him, I'll go to the partner and I'll ask her. And if not her, though, guess what? I sold the mama home. Do you have a referral for me? I'll, I'll get you on my, my referral network, okay? When they're just looking, what would you be? What would you like to be in your new home? What is it important to you about waiting? What, oh, this is the, the key factor. I'm waiting for the market to tank. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're wait, so if you're waiting for the market to tank, so what happened when the market tanked like 10 years ago? What were you doing then? And you're still waiting? I would have bought then. So what, I mean, what, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's be, be realistic. See, I'm a, very, I'm a jokester. When I come across with people, I'm so jokingly about it, but I hit them, I get them. I'm like, okay, listen, the, we already had a crash over 10 years ago. What happened then that you couldn't buy the house then that now all of a sudden you're waiting for the market to tank now? Are you gonna pull the trigger? Because let me tell you, I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. Well, I get a lot of people saying about the rates right now. Yes, so rates are high, but then you can ask them. You rent, right? I'm probably saying, yeah. how much is rent? Uh, three grand. Guess what? That's e as equivalent to a mortgage mm -hmm. payment. But guess what? That money that you're paying for rent, you're giving it to your landlord. So wouldn't you want to be able to be free in your own home, have so many parties, know that it's your actual home, and build equity? Wouldn't you want to claim that on your taxes? Because you get you get credits for that. Start talking. Start like, but I love those objections. I love them. You see them all the time. They're they're always the same ones. So now you guys get an idea for the for the follow up chart on this. Okay. Okay. So then obviously the next page focus on dialogue and scripts. Oh, the looker is working with another agent. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce to that one because that one is actually a good one. When they're working with another agent, so remember, did you sign anything with that agent? What do we What do we talk about? If they said no, we haven't signed. Then great, you talk to them. If they say yes, what do you do? Walk away. Walk away. I've had those conversations where they actually contact me and I ask them out of curiosity. They call me on the phone. This is like, it's hilarious. Like, are you currently working with another agent? Yes, I am. Do you have anything signed exclusively with them? No, I don't. Or, oh, I'm sorry, I take it back. Yes, I do. I go, you know what? Out of respect to my colleague in the business, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to proceed to help you out because I wouldn't want that to be done to me. And that's what you're doing to them. I don't know who you like, how you work, but this is how I work. I'm sorry. I if, just if they if they say oh, uh, but I don't want to continue to work with him or her, whatever. Do you because, have an agreement signed with them? Yeah, but honestly, lately she's been or oh, he's been rude, and I don't if I don't wanna wanna work with them. Okay, so then what I would do if I were you, uh, ma'am, is I will write a letter to the broker, state your, the reasons why you no, wish, no longer wish to proceed with that agent and have the broker cancel out your, your agreement with them. 
and then I'll be more than happy to help you. But out of respect to my colleague and a colleague in this business, I, I can't do that because I wouldn't want that to be fun to me. They, they actually understand. They, they do understand. Okay, so now we got that part. All right, guys. Remember, you have all these scripts in here. I know we're going relatively fast because of the fact that we're talking about the BRE. But again, I love that subject. The BRE is great. Okay, this one I actually, I want to skip to page 31, you guys. Look at page 31. Let me know when you're on there. Yeah. Okay. Page 31 says characteristics of your next home. Because I'm going to be wrapping this one up. Characteristics of your next home. This is what I would have printed out and at your open house. Okay. You know, along with those other forms that have like the MLS sheet, the, uh, what is it, like uh, the school district information or whatnot, this would be something that I would give. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this is something of value. When you leave, when you ha have them leaving or when they arrive, you can even have them fill it out there. Hey, out of curiosity, what are the characteristics of your next home that you're looking for? They're going to be like, well, no one's ever done this to me. They're going to remember that because no agent does that. Mm -hmm. This is different. And then what you can do, they can keep it, obviously. When you do a follow-up call the following day, hey, out of curiosity, how did you do on that form, the characteristics of your next home? Oh, you know what? I didn't fill out. Well, you know what? Since I have you on the line, why don't I get to know a little bit more about what you're looking for? And then you ask them, is it a townhome, condominium, single-family residence, one-story, two-story, what? Five-bedroom, two-bedrooms, what? Master, two-story, one-story, tri-level. We get all that information. Do you want a pool? Do you want a, a mountain view? Um, you know, anything, a, an RV parking space. But it's all I like this one. I think it is this to this one. Yes, this is good. Mm -hmm. I like this. This is a something of value. Like what we did with Fizbo's for sale by owners, we gave them um, you know, a seller's property questionnaire when you first meet with them. That's of value. This is of value at an open house. Because mm -hmm. I can guarantee that they are not, no agent is putting this out there. Okay. Again, it is characteristics of your new next home, page 31. All right. And then when it comes down to follow up, because I'm going to wrap this up because you guys got me on that BRE. I was on one with that one. <laughs> like, I'm all about that. <laughs> I don't want nobody wasting my time, honestly. We need a class just yeah. for the BRE. <laughs> the BRE. Yes, I would love to do a class on that one. I like to answer any and all questions about that one. Okay. Um, that's not the, the word we're going to be talking about. When it comes down to dialogue, just know, honestly, all in all, because we're already at the end of this, all in all, what I would advise you guys of, know your information from the get. When you are doing an open house, be picky, be particular. Find out what areas of focus that you want, um, what purchase price areas. Make sure you have your open house signs. Make sure you have, like, you, if someone's going to do the open house with you, it could be another colleague or it could be a lender that's with you. Make sure you have interests in there, meaning properties in the area that are being sold, even in, sur in surrounding cities, but not too many cities. Make it local to wherever you're at, okay? Uh, have school district, even have community stuff. Make sure that you go well prepared. If your open house is at 12 o'clock, get there around 11 o'clock or 11.15 and set up. It's just not being, it's not being well-dressed and having a flyer there. It takes more of that and more preparation. Know your dialogue and know how to communicate with the person that comes in. That is vital for an open house. And again, just keep track. Numbers are, speak a lot, but you already saw it in the financial opportunity segment of this boot camp. If you do two open houses per week, 45 in a 45-week year, if you're consistent at doing them, 
you'll do great. If you continue doing them, you get more talks, more interactions, so on, so forth. Do we have any questions right now? No. No. Are you ready to do an open house? You are? Yeah. I need the materials, but yes. <laughs> I think you'll be fine. If you just started with us, I think, per personally, I think you'll be fine with the materials. Um, maybe team up with somebody to do yeah. the open house with you so that you're not scared of doing it by yourself. And one safety, safety feature, if you're doing an open house, let your team lead, let whoever you work with know that you're doing an open house along with a family member or whoever your significant other is, whoever. For the simple reason that, yes, we as women, we always want to do everything ourselves. If we're not paired up with somebody, it's only out of safety and precaution. I even say that to men as well. Safety and precaution is vital. Make sure that your handbag is in your is in your trunk of your car. Don't have it lingering around in the, in the house. And I always carry a mace on me um, just in case. Don't leave, uh, what is it, um, keys uh, behind. And make sure that when you clock up the house, you check every closet everywhere, behind everywhere, because you never know and always keep track because you don't want anybody still staying or lingering behind. Mm -hmm. Just always be mindful and aware of your surroundings for security reasons. But I think this open house boot camp is good. Gave, give us great information, how to talk, the dialogue and everything else. And I think you guys will be great. Yeah, I, is the, that, that is what one of the things I don't do with the open house because I don't like to do the open house by myself. I don't like it. Your scary cat? Yes. Okay, we need to bring a dog with you. Um, <laughs> no, but it, it's going to scare my clients. Trust me, my dog is this big. <laughs> okay, well then you need to team yeah. up with somebody. Yeah, I, I don't like to do it open house. With okay, then we need to get you to do more open houses. You need to be in front of the person. Oh yeah, I like to do, be in front of the person. I don't have, I don't so have we need to team you up with somebody to do an open house. Let's see. Somebody was killed already in the open house, so like, I don't like it. Oh my gosh, okay, <laughs> don't scare her, please. No, <laughs> no, it's, no what I say is, uh, like she said, Tina, it's somebody, but you know, what I did, I I do it before, I don't, I don't think I never did. I did it before with when my kids were young and they held me all the time when I do open house. And uh, I have a, a good um, results in that. But my kids there, at least one of them was there with me. And um, I have a good result. But now they are growing, they always, they uh, they gone, so. Okay, well, I just say it as a safety precaution, have your location yeah. services on, just to have someone know that you're doing open house or team up with somebody. Mm -hmm. I've done it by myself, so I, I think people are scared of me instead of me being scared of them. I'm, I'm good with it, you know. <laughs> but other than that, I hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you at next momentum. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Very well. Well. Great. Mm -hmm.